Blog Talk Radio. Stevie B's Media Production is a part of the Shellcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler, you're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to the Gospel Light Radio Show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler from the state of North Carolina with my co-host Glenn McMillian from the state of Texas, Corner Carruthers from the state of Illinois, Steve Corder from the state of Illinois, Dr. Frank Washington from the state of Florida, Clay Phillips from the state of Georgia, Brian Christian Coleman from the state of New Jersey, Robert Lee Johnson from the state of Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful that you are tuning into our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is being brought to you by loving and faithful members of the Church of Christ. We ask you to take out your Bibles and study along with us. We have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give me a call to the live show at 713 955 Zero five zero eight. Or you can go to my Blog Talk Radio website and listen to the show live. That'll be either on pages one or page two of that website. If you have any questions or comments for any of my co-hosts, you can send your emails to my new email address, ButlerSteve1009 at yahoo.com. Or you can call me at Steve B's Media Production at the Carolina Studio at 910-491-6400. Zero five. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. And if you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and stay along with us here on the Gospel Light Radio Show. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we're prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will be with my co-host, Robert Lee Johnson, on the show this evening as he breaks unto our listeners the bread of life. And also my co-host, Brian Christian Coleman, as he answers the questions that on the hearts of so many, we pray that you'll bless them and their families that support their efforts, that they may continue to sow the seed 
of the kingdom. Father, we pray that you will be with our listeners this evening who are tuning in via Blog Talk Radio as well as through social media. We pray that they may listen well and that their hearts may be pricked as they consider their eternal stance before you and their soul salvation. And it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to die such a cruel death on Calvary's cross. We recognize that without such a sacrifice, we will not have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now, we ask you to forgive us for the sins we've committed in our own hearts. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of thy will. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless us. Keep us in love us all the days of our lives, and we have been faithful until death. Father, we pray that you will save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. Our speakers this evening will be Robert Lee Johnson. He serves as evangelist from the New Horizon Church of Christ there in Lake City, Florida. He'll be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ. But we will open up the show uh, this evening with our shouted out question. And our co-host, Brian Christian Coleman, he serves with the Newark Church of Christ there in Newark, New Jersey. He'll be answering our question on the broadcast. So open up your Bibles and open your minds and let's have a great show. After the break, the next one should be that of my co-host, Brian Christian Coleman, as we answer our shouted out question. Enjoy the show. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show.
You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Shout it out question. Ladies and gentlemen, my, this is a portion of the broadcast where I have a question from my social media platform called Shout It Out. And we want to pose this question to my co-host. We also want to encourage our listeners to join that group on Facebook and get involved in those biblical discussions. My co-host, Brian Christian Coleman from the Newark Church of Christ there in Newark, New Jersey. He'll be answering our question on this evening's broadcast. How are you doing, my brother? I'm fine, my brother. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Now, here's the question that we have for your consideration. This question is from an anonymous querist from the state of Texas, and they say, I have noticed that people from the Churches of Christ always like to use Matthew 16, 18 as, as a proof text to prove Jesus Christ built their church. Now, here's the question. Why did Mark omit this statement in his account of the gospel in Mark chapter 8 and verse 29? I will build my church. What say you to this question? Well, we have to understand that we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we need to remember something else very interesting. Mark himself was not an apostle. Remember, an apostle was an individual who had an eyeball-to-eyeball personal experience with Jesus. Mark himself was a disciple, right along with Luke, who was also a disciple. Now, the Bible does not ex- explain or tell us what Mark's occupation is. Now, we do find out that Luke himself was a doctor. Now, Mark himself, each of the apostles or each of the four gospels were written to four different congregations or four different types of churches. For example, Matthew writes his gospel account to a primarily Jewish church, a church that refused to accept the fact that Jesus Christ was a fulfillment of the law and the prophet, and that he was the Messiah. Mark writes his gospel account to a primarily Gentile church, where he emphasized the humanity of Jesus Christ. Luke writes his gospel account to provide a specific account of the historical record of the acts of Jesus Christ, much like what he wrote in the book of Acts. John writes his gospel to a group that is split off from the church, that sees to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. He writes to a group called Gnostics, who refused to believe and had a tough time accepting that Jesus had dwelt in a human body. You see, there are different people, different congregations that needed different writing to encourage and to teach them what thus saith the Lord. Now, we, if it, let's read that particular ch- of chapter and verse that you mentioned in the question. Mark chapter 8 and verse number 9 says, And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? This is an account that we see in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Now you may say, well, Why didn't he mention about building a church? Well, he does mention it, but not in a sense or the way that we're so used to seeing. If we go to verse number 30, you will see where it says, and he charged them that they should tell no man of him, meaning don't tell him who he is, but he did not say, he did tell them, I do have some work for you to do. Even though it does not say it specifically, Mark still writes his gospel letting folk know that there is one church, one Lord, one church, and there was one baptism. We see this in Mark 16, 15, and 16, when Jesus gave the commandment, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. And he told them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he's not done there. He said, for those who don't believe, they shall be damned. So he did identify and he did make specific mentions. We have to understand that each of the apostles and and also the disciples wrote the various congregations. And in their writing to different congregations, not everything was verbatim. They reported it. It was given to them differently. And they all were human beings and they wrote, but they all maintained an understanding and knowledge that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. You can look at the beginning of each of the Gospels in either Matthew chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, 
John chapter 1. They all start off with different statements, but they all come together under the same understanding, under the same knowledge that is talking about Jesus. We have to even understand that Jesus was mentioned way back in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse number 26. When man was created, they said, let us make man. Who was the us? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They said, let us make man. In our own image. It didn't say my own image. It said our image. That means that God the Father, God the Son being Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, which are all one, but they're also separate, were there at that occasion when man was made. We can't always get hung up on what's missing here and what's there. We have to have an understanding that everything that we need to know in order for us to be saved is found in God's word. Everything we need to know is found in his word, and that's why so many times I love saying it. We speak where the Bible speaks, and we are silent where the Bible is silent. The word of God is right. And you know what? Let me just drop my bomb while I'm about to fly over and close this question. It don't need a man to make it right. God's word will stand all by itself. And God's word from Matthew, from Genesis to Revelations, all talks about one God. It talks about one way. And we've got to get in line and just agree and understand that God's word is not going to change no matter how much we, we fuss and, and we have our mouth stuck out, except what God's word says. Because in the end result, it all deals with Jesus as the Son of God and one way to heaven and one church. I pray this has answered that person's individual question. May God bless you this evening. May God keep you. And let us all be what we need to be each and every Sunday, each and every day of our lives, being the Christian, being the creation that our Lord has that made from the dust of the earth. May God bless all of you. Shout it out question. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Singing all night, and it's all day. Before I wake 
Listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, good evening, and thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here and just to have this opportunity to speak with you from the Word of God. I appreciate Brother Stephen this opportunity uh, to come before you and to share. Uh, God's word uh, with you. There's nothing more important uh, for men to do uh, than to take the opportunity to study God's truth and and to be drawn into a relationship uh, with God. I'm going to tell you how to do that today as we study forth uh, from God's holy and divine will. When you look at the world today, When you see the blatant and open sins that men are committing, when you see how relaxed people are today, it ought to remind us that there is a God and that we are accountable uh, to that God. Jesus, the Son of God, came down from the glories of heaven, and our Lord made it possible uh, that all of us might I have the opportunity to be saved. Uh, He died upon Calvary's cross, shed it forth his blood. And I'm going to talk about that blood today and the power thereof. And so if you're not in his way, I humbly encourage you to get in the way of God uh, and do those things that are pleasing and acceptable uh, in God's sight. And so study with me the subject, the importance of the blood of Christ. The Bible states in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse number 22. That's Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse number 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, is no remission. And so God is interested in us being aware of the fact 
uh, that we need to reach the precious blood of Christ in order to have our sins forgiven under the covenant and law. Almost all things were purged and cleansed by blood. In fact, without the shedding of blood, there was no cleansing or forgiveness. This was true throughout the whole reign of the law, from the institution of the law down to the end of the law. For men have always had a sense of failing, of coming short, and of being imperfect. Uh, they have known a frightening fact. They had to pay for their sins, or uh, else someone or something had to take their place and be sacrificed for them. Therefore, man has constantly made a sacrifice for his sins in order to become acceptable to God. He is always sent to know that without shedding of blood, there is no remission, no cleansing, and no forgiveness. This is the argument, the proof that Jesus Christ is the mediator of God's new covenant with man. That was the purpose of God making it known to man through revelation by the Holy Spirit that there's a new and holy way that we ought to be inclined uh, to walk in. Jesus Christ shed his blood. Yes, he did. He died for man. He has paid the penalty for man's sins. He has instituted and launched God's new covenant with man. And good friends, you need to find out uh, what that covenant is today. And you need to walk in God's will and God's way and to do those things that are acceptable uh, in the sight of God. The Bible says in Matthew 26, 28, but this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. i talk more about that later. Much more than being, uh, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, Romans 5, 89. Then the Bible says in Hebrews 9 and verse number 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot uh, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Then the Bible says, uh, our text, Hebrews 9.22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. The Bible continues to talk about this blood and their sins and iniquities. Uh, will I remember no more? Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having in high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. As Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verses 17 uh, through uh, 22. And then the Bible says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. And then John says, in 1 John 1 and verse number 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. First John chapter 1 and verse number 7. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the Bible says, and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, good friends, that tells us that we need the blood. That tells us that God sent the blood, that Jesus came and died for our sins, uh, that we might be saved, and that we might have the opportunity uh, to know him and to know the power of his wonderful word. So we need to relax in Christ. We need to relax uh, in his way and in his church. And we need to relax in the power of the blood of Christ. Now, having given those scriptures, I want to go through some that, I believe to be helpful uh, to us as we seek to understand the power of the blood of Christ. Have you been made clean, my friends, through Jesus' blood? What did you say, Brother Johnson? I'm asking a question today. Have you been made clean through the blood of Jesus? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, and verse number seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Paul told the Ephesus church, uh, he said, in whom, that is Jesus, in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we have redemption uh, through his blood. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. <clears throat> the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. May I point out to you tonight that it takes all of the components of salvation to save us. You see what Brother Johnson it says, blood here, that's right. But it says other things in other places. It takes all of the components of salvation to bring us uh, the forgiveness of our sins. The Bible tells us we need faith. You got to have faith if you want to have your sins forgiven. The Bible says we're saved through grace, through faith. So one must have faith in God. It didn't say faith only. But we must have faith. We must have the grace of God. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, he talked about how he was thankful to God uh, who had given him uh, grace and mercy so that he could be an apostle and work for the Lord and be a member of the Lord's church and go into all of the world preaching uh, the good news about Jesus and about the grace of God. We need the blood. We need all of these components. We need the blood of Jesus to save us, which is what I'm talking about today. You have to reach the blood if you want to be saved. And then we need baptism. You have to go down in the water. People say, well, baptism doesn't save you. Yes, it does. It's what the Bible says. Peter says 
And First Peter 3.21, that baptism does also now save us. That's what the Bible says. It is a baptism alone, but cert certainly baptism is necessary for one to be saved. We must obey Christ in order to be saved. The Bible so teaches, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but Jesus said, he that does the will, or he that doeth the will of my Father. You must obey Christ to be saved. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your uncle, not your auntie, not grandma or grandpa, not some preacher that doesn't know what he's talking about. It takes all of the components of salvation to bring us into a relationship with God. Paul said to the Ephesians, he said, in Christ, in Christ, in whom God placed his precious son and the precious blood of Jesus. So we need that blood. You have to reach the blood in order for us to be saved. And then we need the word of God, for it is that word that we are so dependent upon uh, tonight. Secondly, and so his blood brings us redemption. So why would anyone say that his blood is unnecessary for man to be saved when the Bible clearly says in whom we have redemption through the blood of of Jesus, and it's through no other man, it is through none other, there's no other religious system that God designed for salvation. Secondly, may I point out to you today that his blood allows us to come near God. It draws us into the presence of God. All before we meet the precious blood of Christ. We are far and far and far away from God, our Savior. But the Bible teaches us that once we connect with the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that we can come in the presence of of God in the Old Testament told Moses to get the people and gather them at the foot of the mountain. The Bible says that God said to Moses, Tell those people to clean up before they come before me. Tell the people to get ready before they come before me. That's what God said that you have to clean up before we come before him. And so in the new covenant, if you want to reach God, if you want to reach Christ, if you want to be in the spirit of God, the Bible says that you got to reach the blood and make your spirit, make your soul clean by getting your sins totally washed away. That's how we come in the presence of God. Paul said to the Ephesian church again in Ephesians 2 and verse number 13. Listen to him now. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And so we are drawn close to God by the blood of Christ. It's the element that introduces us to Christ. It's the element that washes away our sins. It's the ele element that opens the door of peace 
so we can stand close to God. And so the Bible says, I need some water. And so the Bible says that we are to come close to God and that we can get nigh. The word nigh means near. And we will fall off, but we're made nigh by the blood of Christ. And so the uh, Ephesian Christians, thank you, came nigh to God through the precious blood of Jesus. There's nothing that can bring you in the presence of God uh, other than the blood of Christ. You got to pass through the blood, and the blood is where Christ cleanses us and makes us whole. Since the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached to them, and they had believed it, these Gentiles who were far from God, far from the people of God, have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. And so I'm saying to you today, my friend, that if you want to come close to Christ, you must go through the blood. Jesus Christ came to break down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile and to make peace between them. He came to bring all nigh to God and to one another. So the way to unite people to one another is to unite them all to God. Jesus brought men to God by shedding his blood for them uh, to be reconciled to God. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I read my Bible. It says that Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not all this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock, one shepherd, John 10, 15 through 16. I'm thankful to God today that I can be in his, shep in his sheepfold, that I can be a member of his church by reaching the precious blood of Christ. And there were those among both Jews and Gentiles who would hear his voice these who were called into the one fold by his bloodshed, his life laid down for them that they might be in the one fold. The one fold is the church. Now, God doesn't have a bunch of churches, but God does have a church. Jesus said, I will build it. And he shed it, his blood in order that man could come and be a member of it. And thirdly, today, I want to tell you something, my friends, that the blood of Jesus makes for a peaceful relationship. Yes, it does. With the Godhead. If you want to know Jesus, if you want to know Christ, if you want to know the Holy Spirit, you must form a relationship with them. And that is accomplished by his blood. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 20. The Bible says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. How does that peace come, Brother Johnson? The Bible says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And so God is assuring us here Uh, that through the preciousness 
of the blood of Jesus that we can have peace. Jesus shed his blood that God might himself be just and the justifier of him that hath faith in Jesus. Romans 3.26, his blood was shed for the remission of sin. As the Bible so says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 7, if we walk in the light, the Bible says, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. God's blood is able to get the job done. It is not God who needs to be reconciled. But men need to be reconciled to God because men are alienated from God. So God has a plan and through God's way, men can come to know God and Jesus and the Spirit of God again. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. We're lost in sin, and God sent us hope by the giving of his son. And so God gave his son for the world of sinners while they were hostile to him. God loved us then. Paul says in Romans 5 and verse number 8, and Paul glories in the grand scope of Christ's work of reconciliation of a universe that is out of harmony with God. You see, my friends, it was God who planned the reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And that reconciliation was carried out by the Son. And so we should always bow with a humble attitude uh, to God. He's done so much for us. But you asked me today about the blood. What does it do, Brother Johnson? The blood justifies us. That's point number four. Romans 5, 8 and 9, the Bible says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. It is through Christ. It is through his blood. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Islam. It is not through a failed system of philosophy that emanates and comes forth from man that we are saved, but it is through the power of God when he sent son into the world to die on the cross for our sins. Preach, Johnson. I'm just preaching my heart out. Y'all not giving me any amens, but I'm preaching anyway. And so God helps us along the way and gives us, he gives us peace. He justifies us. He says, these people are all right because they are doing what I asked of them to do. Yes, he justifies us. The power of the blood. Now I come to point number five. And I think I'll close on this point. I have more to say, but I think I'll close on this point. His blood. His blood. What did the blood do, Brother Jay? His blood bought the church of Christ. His blood. And I want to tell you what that scripture says. In Acts 20 and verse number 28, the Bible says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all of the flock over the which the Holy Ghost 
has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Jesus went to the cross and died on that cross for you and for me. The Bible says he purchased the church with his own blood. Why would anybody say that all churches belong to Christ? They do not. Why would anybody say that one church is as good as another? They are not. The only church that's sanctioned in the New Testament, the only church that's sanctioned by the Bible is the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he purchased the church. That means we're redeemed. That means we're bought. That means that Jesus paid for us. He made that tremendous sacrifice so that we could be saved. And that purchase redemption brought us our salvation. And we're therefore members of the Lord's church. I want to tell you something, friends. If you're unsaved, you need to get where God can save you, and he promised to save you, that if we would walk in the way of God, if we would come by the blood, he promised to save us. And so I thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God with you. And to help you to understand that you must get, you must get where salvation is to be saved. That blood brought us the Lord's Supper, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Yes, it did. It brought us the Lord's Supper. And we're thankful to God to be able to take that supper in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you're not a saved uh, person, you need to come to Christ by walking in his will and his way. The Bible teaches us that we're to hear the gospel, the good news, that Jesus died for our sins. We're to believe uh, the word with all our heart, Hebrews 11 and 6, says with our faith, well, so one must have faith in Christ. You must repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And you must make the confession. The eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you need to get baptized, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. That's what the Bible teaches. God will take you and add you to his way, to his church, whereby you can be saved. You walk in fellowship with God. I want to thank you for listening today. I trust that the word of God has meant something to you and that you've been drawn closer to him as we learn how to have fellowship uh, with the master. I want to thank our host, Stevie B., for inviting me to come and preach today. I want to thank all of you who listen. Uh, to God's truth. I'm Robert Johnson, minister of the New Horizon Church of Christ in Lake City, 
Florida. You have a wonderful evening. And understand that God loves you, that he's interested in where you spend eternity. I hope this lesson has made it crystal clear as to what one needs to do to be saved. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. It's been wonderful talking to you. We'll see you next time. You're listening to the Gospel Light Radio Show. Cool inside, so cool inside. Don't you want to go? Where is cool inside? Dum 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 dum.
listening to the gospel light radio show